Hello guys, good evening, good evening, Evelyn, good evening, Emma, Jenny, how are you doing, Marvel? How's everything? Sure. Hey, good evening, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. I'm doing really good, thanks so much for asking, Evelyn. How was your weekend, guys? How's everything? We are just starting a new week. How do you feel? What's your mood? Ready for a session? Ready for a new experience of uh, learning English? <laughs> or how are you uh, doing so far? First day of the week. <laughs> Marvel, tell me. Talk to me, Marvel. How are you doing, Emma? I saw your message here. I see, um, well, thank you so much for letting me know about your classmate situation. Appreciate it. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. It's good to hear that. And uh, see, Jenny, Evelyn, are you guys ready to start? Yes, all right good um well it's nice to see you guys thank you so much for connecting on time it's 801 so we can you know get started okay so let's see um well have you guys finished the midterm everybody is like uh done with this part or do you guys have any questions before i guess I want to really make sure everybody also is on the same page and that nobody has questions or if you have any, we can go ahead and clarify it before we continue, okay, with what is planned for today's uh, class. So I would like to know if you guys have any question in regards to uh, the midterm or are you guys, you know, completed? No, nothing pending. Marvel, are you done with the, um, with the test? Eh, no check numero dos, no lo pude terminar. Number two, and why, why was that? Was that confusing or what was the reason yet that you couldn't finish it? Mm. You said number two, right? Let me let me see number two, because uh, if you have any ex specific question, let's say maybe one exercise that you didn't understand, you know, we can go ahead and check it. That's not a problem, okay? Okay. I do need you to tell me which is the exercise that you want to double check. So you said number two. Let me see if I can locate number two. But is that the entire, the entire, um, what, the entire section or is just, let me see if I can share the screen. The entire section or only an exercise specifically. Let me see. Let me share the screen. This is screen. Okay, let's see. I can see, I think you actually see my screen. Right, so. Exercise two, you said, right? This is me turn on exercise two. Okay, let's check it. Let's see. Hopefully this thing's going to work. So you said two, exactly. This is the reading. And when you say two, do you mean this one? The second one here will be, is that the one you mean? So it's A, B. You want to check letter B? Or which one, Marbel? Uh, mm -hmm. Which one? Letter B, is that the one you want to check? Or which one specifically? The middle, middle exam. Let me check two. 
Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. But which one exactly? Uh, ¿Puede ver mi pantalla en ese momento? ¿O no la puede ver? Sí, sí. Vaya, ese. ¿cuál ejercicio es el que no, 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 lo, no lo he logrado? Porque aquí no sé. D. So, which one? ¿Cuál de todos estos? Ah, pero es que en su pantalla solo está mostrando la, la principal. Uh -huh. Vaya, pero creo que se quedó frisada. Denme otra vez. Vaya. Permítame. Sí, pero creo que no sé. Entonces no. Ok. Esta. Aquí que aparece. No sé si puede ver ahorita. Aparece el, el midterm, right? Tenemos A, B, C, D, and, I mean A, B, C, D, and E. Ajá, tienes. Tiene cinco secciones. ¿Cuál de todas es la que le ha tenido inconvenientes? El B. Letter B. Ok. Rewriting sentences. ¿verdad? Esa es la del inconveniente. Ok. ¿Cuál es la... What is your question here? ¿Cuál es su pregunta en esta? Eh, el uso de, de, de B. No pude completarla en esta... Uh -huh. La primera parte. La primera uso... parte. Uh -huh, entiendo. El uso de by, ese es by. Recuerde que eso es, eso es voz pasiva. Okay? Lo que tenemos que hacer aquí es asegurarnos que el verbo vaya en su forma en participo y luego ponemos el verbo to be y luego le vamos a poner, le vamos a poner el by y si es necesario el sujeto. Entonces, si vemos aquí George Lucas directed the Star Wars movies, es, eh, lo que vamos a pensar primero es cómo podemos poner ese objeto como, como sujeto. Entonces, yo recuerdo que alguien ya me había preguntado esta, esta oración. ¿Quién, se recuerda? ¿Quién nos puede ayudar? A lo mejor nos ayudan en el chat y le ayudamos al compañero para que ya quede claro esta parte, para darle una idea. O abran su micrófono y nos ayudan, por favor. ¿Alguien quiere ayudar al compañero? <risa> The Star Wars movie were directed by George Lucas. Okay. The Star Wars movies uh, were directed or directed by George Lucas. ¿Ya trató de hacerlo de esa manera, Marvel? El punto es, primero, identificar el, el verbo, ¿verdad? En ese caso, direct, directed. Es en pasado, ok. Luego, The Star Wars Movies es nuestro objeto. Va a ser nuestro subject en oración pasiva. Ok. Y como es movies, esto es plural. Entonces, plural es where, como lo dijo la compañera. Where. Ok. Y luego de where le vamos a poner nuestro verbo en past participle. Directed. Y luego le ponemos la palabra by. Y después de by vamos a poner el doer o el sujeto de la oración. En este caso es George Lucas. Entonces, como lo decía la compañera, voy, déjame dejar, voy a dejar de compartir. Y le voy a mandar solo esto como un ejemplo. Y me hace. Let me share with you. Le voy a mandar un texto y lo, y lo revisa. Ok. So you have the answer. A second. Let me see. O oh, si nos puede ayudar también. No sé si quién fue que nos, nos ayudó ahí para con, digitando la respuesta. Creo que fue Emma, ¿verdad? No me fijé bien bien. Ok, yeah. ok. So please send us the answer. Voy a tratar de typear en este momento también la, la pregunta para que se las envíe. Solo como medida de ejemplo. Entonces, um, dice la compañera de Star Wars Movies were directed by George Lucas. Y la verdad, en, de hecho, pues, indeed, como decimos en inglés, esa es la respuesta. Entonces, Tendríamos que dejarlo. Déjeme hacerlo dígito. So you have it. Sí, give me a second. Let's see. Ok, here we go. Second. Ok. Just. Let's see. The Star Wars movies. Were directed. Recuerde que lo necesario es el uso de la voz pasiva, ¿verdad? Y la voz pasiva la vamos a, vamos a hacer este, tomando el pasado del verbo to be con su verbo en past participle. ¿okay? Ese es el reto. Eh, si no le ponemos past participle, es muy probable que no tenga sentido lo que estamos diciendo. ¿okay? Entonces, como ejemplo, tenemos lo siguiente. Mire, 
en el chat se lo voy a mandar. Está seco, no me está funcionando. Yeah. ¿Ya lo mandó? Yeah. Ah, ok, thank you. Estaba tratando de type, pero me estaba, me estaba sacando del chat por alguna razón. The Star Wars movies were directed by George Lucas. Exactamente. Thank you so much. Vea, tenemos el ejemplo. Eh, lo acaba de mandar Jenny. Jenny, thank you so much. Entonces, el punto aquí, Marvel, es voz pasiva. If it is the past, usamos the spirit to be in the past. Las únicas dos opciones son was and where. En el caso de Jenny utilizó where porque dijimos que es movies y movies es plural. Si es plural, no podríamos decir was. Decimos where. The Star Wars movies were directed by George Lucas. Me gustaría para verificar si se ha comprendido la explicación y con la ayuda de la compañera también, si usted nos ayuda con la siguiente. ¿Qué le parece? Ahí dice, mire, aparece, permítame que mi compu está poseído. <ríe> ok, next one. Ah, oh, aquí está. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee developed the World Wide Web. ¿Cómo hacemos esta oración que está en su momento como voz activa? ¿Cómo, how do we make this conversion into passive? A ver, ayúdenos, tratemos de recordar lo que dijimos en la clase de Passive Voice in the Past. Le vamos a ayudar, le damos un minutito para que piense. Los demás, si ya se la saben, pues excelente. Si no, pues ahorita es también un momento para aclarar esas dudas. Pensemos, Marvel. La Creo que para verla, no, no, no estoy viendo la pregunta. La... No, nada, si sí, es que no la, no, la, no la he compartido, pero ahorita la voy, te la voy a mandar. Permítame que fíjense que estoy viendo de que creo que el, mi teclado está bien sensible, entonces me, me está sombreando, casi todo me sombrea, no la puedo copiar. Pero déjenme tratar una vez más. Aquí vamos. I think my, my, my keyboard needs replacement. Let's see. Ok. Okay, I think I have it. Something. By the number two, this is the same manner. Tim Berners Lee developed the World Wide Net Web. Era que me faltó una una. Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a mandar, cómo vamos a construir esta pregunta o esta oración en una forma pasiva? Ahí la mandé, hoy sí la va a recibir. A ver si se envió, no se envió. Let's see. Quiere enviar. Tampoco tiene que enviar second. Hold on. No tiene acceso usted en ese momento a la plataforma, Marvel. Que no me deja ni enviarle la... Como que me está bloqueado el... el, el, el pero creo que es un problema con mi computadora. Tim Barners, déjeme ver si le puedo compartir. One second. Give me a sec, please. One second. Here we go. Here I have it. Usted no está trabajando ahorita en, el, en, la, en esa parte. No tiene el acceso todavía a esa, a esa parte. Bueno, aquí me lo volvió a cargar. Here it is. Ok, aquí está. A little bit. I want you to be patient on this one. Okay, here we go. Share it. Boom. I think you guys can see it. Uh, look at number two here. If you can see it now, this one, can you see it? Tim Berners Lee developed the, the World Wide Web. So the question for you is how can we make this into passive voice? Ok, 
quizás la mayoría de ustedes ya lo terminó, ¿verdad? Por eso, si esa es la, la, I like it. Just, you know, let's give some time. Démosle unos minutitos a Marber que piense cómo convertimos esta oración en una voz pasiva. Porque actualmente está en voz activa, porque el sujeto está haciendo la acción. ¿Verdad? Ahora lo que no queremos quizás en su momento es mencionar quién desarrolló la el www, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. So let's see. There, there were... Uh -huh. The word we well was was by the no, no sé cómo dice the the develop develop uh -huh. develop developed 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 uh -huh. timbers Después del verbo ponemos la palabra que usted mencionaba, que es by. By. Uh, uh -huh. Entonces, la, la estructura es la siguiente. Primero ponemos nuestro object, se torna en nuestro objeto. Luego ponemos el verbo to be de acuerdo al, al objeto. En este caso, the world wide web es una. ¿verdad? Entonces, es is o was. En este caso es was, porque es pasado. The world wide web was developed. By, y decimos el nombre de la persona, en este caso Tim Berners-Lee, ok, muy bien, muy, muy, muy cerca, la verdad, solo le falta un detallito, entonces para concluir con ese tema, ¿qué le parece si hacemos el último? Mire, Ian Fleming wrote the James Bond novels, ¿cómo nos quedaría esa? Pensemos, y me la comparte, a ver cómo le queda, los demás si gustan, si ya la tienen y y tienen alguna idea que agregar, pues muy bienvenido con esa parte también. Ok, ya vamos a ir retomando aquellas partes que ustedes consideran que aún hay que revisar las del, del, del Mitchell. No, 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 no define el verbo. Vaya es. ¿Ah? Word. Exactamente, excelente. Ya con eso que usted ha identificado es un, es un gran logro, ¿verdad? Entonces, ya tenemos el verbo que es rot. El pasado de rot, el presente de, de rot, perdón, es right. 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 <coughs> right. right. Si sí, nuestro presente es right, nuestro pasado es rot. Pero usted, usted y yo sabemos que para la voz pasiva necesitamos el, la, la forma en, par, en participio, que es la forma parte del participio del verbo, lo cual es la última categoría de, de una lista de verbos, columna 3. Write, wrote, ¿cuál es el tercero? ¿Cuál es el verbo? Write, wrote, y luego. Writing. Written, va, excelente. Y tiene, tiene la respuesta ya. Solo la, es, la, es written. Aquí lo voy a poner en la pantalla. Ojalá ya aparezca. <ríe> written. Ok, ya tenemos written. Entonces, ahora lo que necesitamos identificar es el objeto. En ese caso, se convierte. ¿Cuál sería, cuál sería el objeto? Después del verbo, por lo general, tenemos el objeto. Porque es el que recibe la acción. Entonces, ¿cuál sería el objeto? Fleming. No, Ian o este Fleming sería nuestro sujeto. Porque él hace la acción. En una voz activa, eh, primero tenemos el subject, el sujeto. ¿verdad? Luego tenemos la acción. Pero en la voz pasiva, invertimos. Porque no nos interesa tanto quién hace la acción sino más bien el objeto mismo como siendo el centro de la, de la oración. Entonces, sería como, ¿cuál es el objeto? Pensemos, tomamos un minutito. Novels. Novels. 
pero Nobel, sí, ya la idea ya la tiene. Ahora, pensemos si solo el Nobel sería el, el objeto o hay que incluirle algún otro detalle. Porque las novelas tienen su origen o su nombre. O, entonces, ¿cuál sería? Pensemos. James Bond. Ahí okay, ya. le ponemos James Bond Nobel. ¿Cree que faltaría algo? Hay que ponerle el, el este objeto completo. Entonces, si solo le ponemos James Bond Nobel, seguramente se va a comprender, pero hay que tomar en este caso toda la referencia. Entonces, vamos a decir da James, James Bond Nobel. Y luego, ¿qué le ponemos? ¿Qué verbo tu le acompaña a este, a este nuevo sujeto que viene siendo traído de un objeto directo de una, voz, de una voz activa? ¿Qué le ponemos? ¿Le ponemos was o le ponemos where? Was. Pero veamos, veamos el número del, del objeto. ¿Será que James Bond Nobel es una o es más de una? Más de una. Y más de una le pongo where. Where, muy bien. Entonces sería the James Bond Nobles, where, y luego nuestro verbo en, en paz participo sería? Written. Written, muy bien. Y luego del verbo le vamos a poner by, que es como decir en español por, ¿verdad? En este escenario. Entonces sería the James Bond Nobles, Were written by, y ahora vamos a poner quién fue el que las escribió. Es como decir, mire, si traducimos literalmente Marvel y Clash, sería que las novelas de, de James Bond fueron escritas por, y decimos quién las escribió. Eso es voz pasiva. Cuando yo digo voz pasiva es porque yo podría decir solamente eso. Mire. Yo podría decirles. The James Bond novels were written. Y al final, si no queremos mencionar o no al sujeto, es, es opcional. Bueno, entonces nos queda de, la, de esta manera. Uh, no sé si le gustaría o tiene alguna pregunta. Sobre el siguiente ejercicio, ¿le gustaría hacerlo? Lo voy a Ok, bueno. Entonces, ¿lo va a hacer ahorita o, o quiere que... O se, o se va a quedar con el reto? Voy a quedar con el reto. Lo vamos a hacer despacito. Bueno, entonces vamos a hacer lo siguiente. Usted lo completa y luego si gusta lo envía al grupo para ver cómo le ha ido. ¿sí? Para ver si tiene mal. Bien le contesto yo o algún compañero que vea el ejemplo, pues nos va a ayudar. ¿Verdad? Con cómo le quedó el, de, el otro del de, de Gustav Eiffel Design, Eiffel Tower. Bueno, ¿alguna otra pregunta, okay. clase? ¿Alguna otra pregunta que tengan? ¿Alguna duda? Quizás no necesariamente de esta, de esta sesión. Quizás posiblemente tengan una pregunta de otra sesión. Veo que hay 14 conectados. De repente, o todos ya terminaron la, la, el, el meter. Estamos bien ahí. ¿Sí? Jenny, Angie. Yes. 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 I, But I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, level uh, number four. Uh -huh. It's about the signs on, on, on the phonics. Um, wait. You said you said number four. So yes, hmm. yes, it's a, a, a D. D. Uh, circling the words. Uh huh. <clears throat> four period six. Number six. No four. Four six. Four, six. Yes. No, let's check. Oh, four, six. Oh, you're talking about section four. Yes. Ah, not, not about the meter. No. Mm, okay, okay, I see. Give me a second. Then, then you are <gasps> basically working on the on this week, right? No, 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 no. I, I, I have it. My question 
was about um, I don't have all the all that um, all the uh, se me olvidó la palabra en inglés dibujos uh, drawing yes I don't have all the drawings only one two four and five and one. right now I have all all them. So you have 10 already. And your question is that you want to know. We I, I don't I don't have all the all the drawing. Mm -hmm. okay. All I have uh four four of five four of six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But right now I have all of them. Okay, so you you basically um let's say you solved it your question because you have the yeah, drawing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I see. Thank I you. See. Thank you, thank I you, see. thank you. Oh, we just it was just a matter of maybe um maybe zooming in the images. It might, it might have been maybe larger from the screen you're using. It might be. Well, any other question, guys, that you might have maybe in regards of the um, I don't know the meter that you want to ask before we start. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right, so I can see that we're we're okay then. Let's see. Today, guys, we have uh, this is session. This is week number three. So basically, this week uh, we need to work on section number four. And I can see that Angie already finished it because <laughs> she's doing the knowledge check. Well, that is for this week, which does not mean that you have to go as I'm doing it. You can, of course, you know, anticipate every every session or every section, which is totally fine. Okay, so today I still have some content or some ideas from section number three because we didn't complete one, one reading that, that I consider we have to review. And let's see, we have the first activity for today and this is a reading, which we didn't do last time. So let's see, I don't know if you have already read the, the suggested text here, Let's see, maybe if you already finished, um, let's see the meter. I think you already read this um, suggested text. What was the reading? What was the very last reading on the, on the platform about section number three? Who remembers the last, the very, very last suggested reading? Who remembers? What was the topic? Mm -hmm. Who did it? Who read it? Hmm, interesting. Okay, maybe you don't remember exactly. But then there was this reading that we didn't go over, which is about Harry Potter. Okay, and I think we need to check it because there are some good ideas that, are, that we need to discuss, maybe some vocabulary and Whenever there's a reading, I always suggest my students to maybe make a list of vocabulary because there's a lot to learn, you know, from these type of things, especially because this is a story that I like reading. I would say it really inspires, you know. So let's see. Then um, let me start sharing it. Who remembers what was previous uh, class topic besides this reading? What did we do on previous class? Uh -huh. What did we do on previous class? I think I heard it, but I barely heard it. The, uh, out for wonderful tables. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is that. Okay. And what else did we do? Because I know we did that. And then there was another topic that we were discussing. Who remembers it? Uh -huh. Who remembers what we did? There was a topic that we were working on and, and you guys were giving me some examples. What was this topic? 
Melissa, what do you remember, Melissa? What did we do? Do you remember anything from previous class? Sorry, sorry teacher. In previous class, I was... I don't connect it because I was problem uh, with my connection. Okay, so you have problem with the connectivity. Okay, let's see. Emma, what do you remember, Emma? We were working in relative causes and, and we talked about different kinds of things that we were talking before, but we had some relative causes with two sentences, simple sentences that we were working before. And at the end of the class, we were working on homework that is in the platform about things that we have to have to classify. I don't remember exactly the word, but it's about awful wonder flows to fit in a strange. And that's that we were doing. Thank you so much, uh, Emma, for refreshing our mind. Exactly, right? We worked on relative clauses, and then we also worked on the on some adjectives, right? And that was exactly what we did. I'm trying to display the class and me meanwhile Emma was speaking, but I'm just having a problem. I think something is wrong with my um my mouse or because it doesn't it doesn't allow me to display. But then I had something here prepared in regards of relative clauses because I do want to recall this topic because I remember that we had at the beginning some uh, questions. But then I think at the end, we kind of like had the idea, right? So let me see if I can display it this time. I think it won't let me share, but I don't know why. Hmm. Okay. Yes, second. It says to me, Give me a sec, hopefully. Maybe if I right click this thing, give me one second, guys. Give me a sec, one second, please. Something is wrong with this thing today. I think the devil possessed. Okay, I think I'm back and hopefully this time is going to work. Uh, let's see, here we go, one second. Yes, I think, thanks God, but this time is taken. Let's see, one second, we, this is, uh, can you guys see my screen? Marvel, Angie, can you see it? 
Yes, okay. Yes. But it, it took me to the very first one. It, you know, I think um, something happened to it, but then it's okay. As long as you guys can see it, it's, it's fine. Well, this is a whole review on, on what we have done. Let's see what else. This is. Okay. And then. Session. This is when we sh when you shared the stories. This is when you guys talked about uh, ED with uh, and then the movies we talked about. We did this. We solved this session number seven. Relative clauses. We talked about this last time and we finished it. You held me with these and let's see. We almost get in there. Hopefully, we're gonna be able to see it before the class. It's <laughs> this thing. Okay. Uh, relative closes. We worked on this previous class. We're very close. We almost make it. So, this is what we did last time. And okay. You helped me last time on this. We solved it and we did this. And then we took the the midterm, right? We saw this quiz on previous class too. Okay. You, you helped me with this, I remember. And I think we didn't finish this part. And then, oh yeah, you did. I, and now this is for today. Right, today is session nine. Okay, and then I had this practice in relative clauses, just to you know remember what we did on previous class. So I will, I would like you to help me. Those who are uh, with me, please let's read the first example and let's solve it as a whole class. Uh, we have said that relative clauses are two simple sentences. And then when we create one single one using a relative pronoun, then it becomes one relative clause. So first example, letter A. Marble, can you see it? Can you help me to read it, please? Can you, can you see it? We chose the hotel and then? It's um, similar to their nice. We chose their hotel with similar to be the nice. Exactly. Thank you so much. So we say we chose the hotel. It seemed to be the nicest. How do we make these two simple sentences into one sentence? And that is, we chose the hotel, which seemed to be the nicest. We, de we, we delete it or we do not say it, but we add which. So how can we join the two sentences that, that we have on the next letters into one using who or which? So let's see, we have letter B. Let's do this a little bit fast. I know this is a topic that we already checked, but I still want you to help me with this. She spoke to the man, period. He was standing next to her. So how can we make one single sentence? Only speak, please. She spoke to man who was uh, standing next to her. Correct. Thank you so much. Yes, that is correct. What about letter C? Anybody else? I read the letters which came in the morning post. Mm -hmm. You see, thank you so much. I like it. So let's, we're doing this really fast. What about letter D? Anybody else, please, uh, please participate. I know there are uh, 13 people connected. So please raise your hand and Read the next ones, please. He, he likes the other people. They work in the office. And what about the relative clause sentence? How can we make these two sentences into one?
invites the other people to work in his office. Awesome. Thank you so much. I like it. You know, that's the idea. What about letter E? <laughs> She is that singer who has who was on television last night. Awesome, you see? Good. That tells me that you guys have understood this topic, maybe because you already know it, or maybe because you have a study, but that's great to great to see and great to hear it. So letter F, let's see. Letter F. Gustavo. Next week, there's a festival uh, that happens in the village every summer. And, and now the relative clause? Uh, that. Mm -hmm. So next week, there is a festival that happens, okay? And then if we have to choose from who or which, which is your selection, Gustavo? Which? Ooh, okay, which. Good, thank you so much, appreciate that. And we finish, I pay the bills, they came yesterday. What is the relative clause? Which? Mm -hmm, exactly. So say to me the whole sentence, please. I pay the bills. Which they came yesterday. Which, Angie? They came yesterday. Something is missing or is being added there that is not correct, Angie. Listen to yourself again, please, and then say it. I paid the bills. Okay. And... I paid the bills, which they came yesterday. Which came. Which came. Which came yesterday. Exactly, and you remember that the intention of using relative clauses is to avoid repetition or to avoid mentioning the subject in the second sentence. It's a way to, to sound more natural. Just by adding a relative pronoun, you will combine the two sentences into one. And that's the way people or native speakers do it. So they do not say, I paid the bills. They came yesterday they will make one single sentence. They will say, I paid the bills which came yesterday. So whenever we use relative pronouns, we can omit or, or what, delete if it's, uh, you know, writing that subject, okay? Remember that. Well, this topic is already, you know, from the previous class, but I still wanted to bring it, you know, for this class. And if you have any questions about relative clauses, it will be great if you can ask like now, or maybe you can create your own examples and then you, you still are allowed to share them on, on the next class. So what, what, um, what questions do you have, guy? as of now? Anything, anybody or anything that you want to add or ask? No? All right, so but let's, yes, go ahead. So about uh, using or uh, using that, uh, I I remember we we can use who, which, or that when use uh, relative clause. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what's the difference to use only who or which in that example? Mm -hmm. Thank you for that question. First. That can be used for people and for things. That is yeah. one of the main, main things that we have to remember. That is more general because it applies for uh, people and for things. Remember that now. Who is only for people? So my suggestion is using who for people and use that for things. But in, when you are speaking informal, like on a daily basis, then you might be using that for all things. However, when you are giving a written text or test, then remember who for people, that for things. And then if you don't have options, let's say if they tell you use who and then use which, then you know that you have to use who for, for people and that's it. And then which is more for specific things. Let's say uh, which is more specific. 
So that would be the only okay. difference. That would be the only difference, actually. Then there are no more things. So you say which you are referring to something specific, and that's the way it is. Like if you want to be very specific about any situation or event or thing, which is the best choice? If you want to talk about people, who the best choice? And that is general. Let's put it like that. Okay. So um, okay. good, Thank good. Thank you for asking. Now, guys, let's move on. Let's take a look at this one. I know you might already talked about Harry Potter, but I still want you to tell me what's your opinion. I think we, we kind of like discussed this on previous class. So which Harry Potter movie um, have you seen from the ones that are there? All of them. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. And do you have any favorite one or all of them are your favorite one? Mm -hmm. Mm. Is number there any... four, maybe number seven, the Harry Potter and 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 Goblet of Fire. Mm -hmm. You see, and and maybe Deadly Hollow Part Part One, maybe. Okay. Wow, I think I need to see all those movies because whenever I'm like talking about Harry Potter, people, I mean, most of them, they have watched all of them. And, and I think I have seen maybe one or two, but I don't have like the, the whole, like, or a clear idea about each of them. But it's good to hear that anybody who's like me, who haven't seen any, any or maybe only one movie, or I'm the only one who, and I want to know why, why is it that you haven't seen all of them? Anybody? It can be time. It can be, I don't know, you don't like it. Or to tell me, what's, what's the, what is your situation? Or maybe you have read the books, I don't know. You don't want to share okay that's fine and have you read the text the suggested text on the website on the platform there's a reading okay yeah okay you did it awesome then if you yeah. did that i think maybe gustavo is the only one he's like very into it but then jeffrey did you read it hosman did you do it stephanie giovanni emma did you read the text angie melissa Jenny? Yes. I yes, did. you did it. Okay, yeah. that's really good then. So I think uh, if that's the case, it's going to be very easy to, to go over this. And let's see, what do you remember then about this text? What's something that caught your attention or your eye about this text? Let's see if you remember. What is something that you remember from this? Yeah. Mm, what do you remember? Maybe I need to. Oh, J.K. Rowling's uh -huh. really a uh, she she wasn't a mm, uh, very very what do you say bright from the start. She got uh, a lot of of bad moments before being a star. A writer. Yeah, okay. and, and the form when when she uh, starts to write about Harry Potter, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So good, Gustavo. Good, good idea. Good contribution. Anybody else? Because I know you already read this. What's something that you like about this reading? Um, hmm, let's see. What's something that you say, wow, this is interesting. I didn't know about this. Uh -huh. I remember that the writer was broad and, and she was living in a small uh, apartment. And 
also the crowd mind. Attention was that they grow uh, or the idea come in a, into a trip, uh, a, a train trip. So they write in a train trip the story of uh, the wizard and all of that. Exactly. Good. I can see that you have read it. Awesome. Okay, let's see who else wants to participate. And then uh, it's really interesting, as Gustavo said, how uh, the creator of Harry Potter or its writer, you know, lives change because somebody just mentioned that she was broke. And there's one part that, that says that she lived in a cramped apartment. Just imagine that situation, living in a very like, I don't know, tiny or small apartment. I don't, I don't imagine the conditions she lived. And then all of a sudden, everything changed. I still want to hear some of your ideas. So who else wants to participate? Give me your opinion. What, what do you think? Think it's real or it's just something that is um, another story that is not real or fake? Anybody? Evelyn, go ahead. Did you say Evelyn, right? I heard, I, I saw Evelyn. Yeah. No, <laughs> I think it was Emma. Emma. <laughs> Emma. Uh, yeah, yes. I already talked about the story. <laughs> okay, Emma, okay, Emma, <laughs> your turn. So what do you think about it? And do you believe in magic or not? Have you seen all these movies? Um, do you believe in, um, I don't know, witchcraft or wizardry? Have you ever, I don't know, considered uh, thinking about these things or is something that you don't perceive as real? What do you think? Well, I think that everything can happen and maybe it's weird because I have never talked about that, that thing and I watched that movie many years ago, so I don't remember exactly what happened in that movie. So I just remember some little things about, it. but about the life of the writer, I think it's amazing. And I believe in that because like I told you before, everything can happen in, and if you can dream it in, if you work hard, you can do everything. You inspire me. <laughs> so if you work hard, you can get everything. The world is the phrase. If you can dream it, you can have it. But then it's, it's not only dreaming, it's about working hard, right? And maybe not working hard. Now there's another phrase that says working smart, right? So thank you so much for your opinion. I really like it. And then, yeah, when I read this story, you know, it really, for me, it was really um, interesting the way she was at the beginning, not even considered. And then she had problems with her life. She remarried, you know, yeah, that's really, you know, I, I don't know, maybe challenging or difficult moment of her life. But then she overcame everything, you know, she had to face and, and then, you know, Boom, everything changed. Okay, good. I still have a space for one more opinion. And the purpose of this is that you guys, maybe if you know everything from this reading is easy, but I still, I believe that there's, there are always new words we can get from this reading, right? Maybe somebody wants to raise their hand and say, hey, I didn't know this word and now I know it based on this reading, or I'm going to create my own list of vocabulary. Or if it is easy, everything is okay, then fine. But I don't know if you have any questions or any other opinion about this text, guys. Anybody who hasn't participated? With this uh, text, we are basically finishing uh, chapter 
uh, I mean section number three. And today I just wanted to talk about this text and also I wanted to leave some time for us to discuss on the, on the midterm. But then I can see everybody has done it and then we don't have anything else to say. And there's, there, are, there were two questions about this and I, I think you already answered it right on the platform. And let's see. Then who remembers the questions guys there? How do you do on, on the questions? Do you get a hundred out of, I don't know, there were six questions I remember. Did you get all of them correct? Or did you have to try second time for you to get them correct? What was your experience? At once, at a hundred, let's say, all of them correct? Yes. About what what questions? Excuse the me. questions based on the reading. There were like some oh, questions. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. They were easy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No problem with that. All right. Well, guys. Then uh, if there are no questions about the midterm. I I really want to. Um, I don't know. Maybe because I have the set the next part the next topics. But then I want to leave it for next class. On next class, we're gonna tomorrow. We're gonna discuss our our next. Uh, well, this is a new topic. Maybe not that new. We're going to talk about feelings and gestures. Okay. So I still want to leave this for next class. If you have some time, investigate about uh, feelings and gestures. And I would like you to tell me if uh, you consider. I mean, how important do you think body language is? Do you think that matters or not? Maybe if you see somebody's gesture, do they mean or say anything? Or, you know, what's your opinion? So investigate about body language. And then tomorrow you're gonna tell me what body language is for you and how important it is in, in life, okay? Maybe if anybody from this class is a psychologist, this person can, taught a lot about this I imagine and I remembered that I had an experience I had a friend who was always telling me hey come on don't cross your arms or don't do this because you are telling me this or telling me that so do you think body language is important guys maybe one or two opinions because time you know we only have like, two, like three more minutes or how important is body language guys, before we talk on about this anybody any psychologists or maybe what you have heard? Maybe it's a compliment for the communication. That's a really good point. I like it. Yes, I agree with you. Uh, it's a compliment for communication. So then do you think um, maybe any gesture can transmit uh, an idea or I don't know, I was reading this. In some countries, uh, it, you cannot, you cannot, if I, if I do this, like if I, if I do this, that will be impolite. I cannot point at you because I'm, that might be that I'm misrespecting you. So how do I say you to come to, to me? You don't use this finger, you use the whole, the whole palm. You say, come here. Because if you do this, it's like I'm pointing at you and then I'm, I am misrespecting you, you see? So maybe, the body language has to do with culture as well, right? Maybe what it is in here, um, I don't know, uh, something permitted in another country might, might not be, you know, the same way. So for tomorrow, I'm gonna leave some space for you to talk to me. And if you can investigate about body language and how important this is, do it. Because tomorrow we're gonna talk about this. And if you can anticipate the vocabulary is about gestures and feelings and that's, tomorrow's topic, okay? But then uh, write it maybe on your notes. So what's body language and how important it is in real life. And then we talk about this tomorrow, okay? Well, as of now, guys, thank you so much for, for being you know present here and see you tomorrow, okay? Take care and bye-bye, take care. Bye teacher, bye everybody. Bye-bye.